Hi, this is Lauren from LSP Actions and welcome to the tutorial for the LSP Banding Buster Photoshop Mini Action. This action is for Photoshop Creative Cloud only. If you're using older versions of Photoshop, CS4, CS5, CS6, you know the old version a few years ago that you buy as a standalone, um, it just simply doesn't have the capabilities to run this action. So it's definitely worth, if you don't already own Photoshop Creative Cloud, it's definitely worth downloading. Um, and the same goes for Photoshop Elements. So this is for Photoshop full versions of Creative Cloud only. And the idea of this action is you can use it to paint away any of these pesky areas of banding in your image. Banding is quite often happens on a smooth background when you have a transition from dark to light. And quite often it's a purely digital phenomena, but sometimes it is embedded in your image. There is a blog post over on the LSP Actions website, lsp-actions.com, with lots of information about what causes banding and what you can do to kind of minimise banding in your editing workflow. But sometimes you're stuck with it, it happens. Sometimes it can be part of an action. It can be when you've had um, some vignette, some gradient, when you've kind of had to paint over areas. Or sometimes it can be um, the background quality itself. It can be so many things. So what I've done here, I've uploaded uh, several images and I've actually kind of gone ahead and added a bit of banding to them in different ways. So you'll see here, I don't know how well you can see on your screen. It depends on what quality you're watching this video at but we have four very distinct different types of banding in this image. And the first thing you need to do after downloading the Banding Buster Photoshop Action um, from the LSP Actions website is load this into your Photoshop Action panel. You can normally do this by double clicking the action. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this now. Just double click the action. If this doesn't work, um, you can follow the instructions on the LSP Actions video tutorial. So you go on the website, click on video tutorials and you can find Photoshop installation. If you can't see your actions, come up to window and hit actions. The banding buster will come right at the bottom. I'm just gonna make the action panel teeny weeny because the ba banding buster is very, very small. Here it is. All you've literally got is the title. You have LSP part one, the banding buster, paint solid color and snapshot and flatten. Uh, the reason I have uh, named these this way is because this is the one you're going to want to play first, the banding buster. This is the main action. Number two is an optional. It's painting a solid colour. Now, sometimes I will warn you, solid colour can actually cause banding. So this is only if you've really tried everything and you just need to go ahead and just wipe it out with a complete solid colour. And number three is a snapshot and flatten. To run this, I recommend you have your history panel open as well as your layers panel. So come up to window. Hit layers if you can't see it and hit history if you can't see it and that means that your layers and your history will be here. To begin with your history we'll just say open. I also recommend running um, flattening your image. This action is going to work best for full size images so if you have a tiny thumbnail it might be a little bit much but I can't see why you wouldn't be running this on a full size image anyway so it's all cool. You can also click over into button mode if you want to. Snap your actions into a nice neat column, come down to the bottom and uh, you'll see the action here, the banding buster, the paint solid colour and the snapshot and flatten. So let's get started. It's really, really simple. So open up your image and identify the area of banding. What we're going to be doing is playing the action and then painting it on. You do not want to paint this over your subject, over their hair, anything like that. It's going to make it too smooth looking. So you can either click, just click on the action in button mode or you can click and play the action in grey mode. It does take a good few seconds to play out. It really depends on how fast you're photoshopping because it does some quite heavy um, things to get this action working properly. And there we go, it's done. So you'll see here in your layers panel, you have three black layer masks. Layer masks are like a lottery scratch card. Black means show, white means hide. So you're gonna go ahead and grab a brush set to white. I like my settings to be normal, 100% opacity, 25% flow. You can bump this up a little bit if you want to. The first mark is already selected for you. That's the LSP Banding Buster brush. Oof, try saying that after a drink. So we're gonna click on here and just start painting over the banding and you'll see it does a really good job of taking it away. Now banding is very digital. It's Photoshop's rendering of an image and gradients within that image. So don't be surprised if it doesn't completely go away. Um, and you can always play the action twice, but sometimes you really don't need to, you know, completely, you just wanna reduce it. And if you can just reduce it enough so you're happy, then that's really good for this action. 
And what you don't want to do is paint this over your subject. See like here, you see the skin and the face is too soft. So if you accidentally do that, grab your brush, set to black, and paint it off the skin. Black means hide. So you can just go ahead. I like to keep my finger, my index finger, on the X key of the keyboard because I can switch easily between a black and a white brush. White to show the effect, black to hide. I do recommend afterwards going around with a black brush around the edge of your subject, just carefully. You can make your brush quite hard as well to make sure it's not adding any kind of haloing onto your subject. So that's quite important. You really don't want to be brushing this over your subject. But that's done a really good job of the banding. Let's just zoom in there. We do still have some colour banding there, but that has really done a good job so far. Let me show you before and after of taking that away. Look at that, a huge, huge difference. All I can really see now is that maybe a tiny bit of green and purple in there. Above this, you have calm noise paint. So for example, if your image is very, very smooth, because the banding does add noise, that's kind of one of the main ways of getting rid of banding is having that noise in there to disperse it. So this action does have a little bit of noise. If it's too much, you can click on the calm noise paint up here and just brush that over and it will calm the noise down. Alternately, if your image already does have some grain in it, um, all the banding still showing, you can click up here on the paint more noise action and you can go the other way and paint that on. Or you can do both and it'll get you somewhere in between. So you can just play with those. Let's turn that off. It hasn't affected the original background image at all. One bit, everything is separate up here that you can turn on or off, paint on or off. You, above this as well, you also have paint solid colour. I'm going to play this one. Oh, Banding Buster as well. If it, if it just hasn't done, if you think I need one more go, you just click on it and play it again. And it's just going to keep doing the same thing. You can just paint it on, but it will start from the last point. It doesn't start from your background there. It will start from that last point where you've already reduced the banding. So you can go ahead and play it again. The examples I'm using in this are very extreme examples. So don't be surprised if you don't need to play it more than once. So let's just grab the white brush we can paint it on. You can see now it's pretty much made a meal of that banding. It's really ultra smooth. Adds a little noise in there just by clicking on these actions. So we see there before and after. Boom. Paint the solid colour. Now what this one does, you know, painting a solid colour really is a last resort. I've included it in there because in some instances of extreme banding, sometimes you might just want to just do a do over and just paint over it. What you've got to watch out for is banding. <laughs> when you're trying to paint over banding, you might inadvertently accidentally make more banding. So just be very, very deliberate while you're painting. So I'm just grabbing a brush. Sorry, the brush is absolutely huge. And the solid colour, you can just dab this over. It may be a little lighter or darker than your original image because it takes the average colour in your image to make this colour. So I'm just painting that over. You can see it's quite a bit lighter. So above this we have paint darker, so I'm just going to come over with that. Again, be very deliberate with this because, oh look, we have some banding. So be very, very careful. If you're going to do it, fill the whole area with this. This is a secondary step. This is the last resort if the initial banding buster doesn't fix it for you. So don't feel like you have to do this every time. You can see I'm just coming up and I'm just really using that entire solid block there. I'm not going gentle with this one because if you do, it's going to have some banding. And again, the same thing, paint lighter. If your image, um, if it's the paint, the color paint's too dark, you can just come in here and lighten it up and just paint it over. And then the magic noise. So we can just paint this over if you want to. As well, if you've got a little bit of new banding in the color you've put over to get rid of the old banding, you can just come and paint this noise over. So I'm just gonna take those and I'm gonna pop them in a group you don't have to do this. I'm just doing this so I can show you before and after. So before and after. So we've really smoothed that out. I'm just going to come down perhaps just a little bit here. Okay. And number three, you have snapshot and flatten. This is where your history panel comes in. So if you play snapshot and flatten, of course, if you want to keep your layers, I recommend going up to image and duplicate. And what this will do, it will open your layers as a new um, image or your layers. And then you can go ahead and flatten down. I recommend snapshotting and flattening regularly through the editing because the more layers you have, the kind of the slower and more clunkier your edit and your layers panel can get quite confusing. So I like to flatten regularly. If we go over to a history panel, you can see the first snapshot. This was the image as we opened it. This was the original banding. And this is where we ended up. It's gone. So before 
and after in a few minutes. Look at that huge, huge difference. That was before the tonal paint and that was after. So ideally try and do it before, but if it's really, really heavy and you really need to get it gone, use the tonal paint. So let's go again, this image here, back to the layers panel. I'm gonna play the banding buster. Da -da -da. For some reason it puts this song in my head. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a white brush and let's just paint over the banding. So you can see there's gonna be no need for a solid color. That is completely dispersing the banding there. And there we go. What I can also see though, this image is very, very smooth. So you can see the difference here if I get a very, very hard brush between where I'm painting. Can you see that? There's quite a lot of grain compared to the original image. Now really this isn't gonna show in print or anything, but if you're a perfectionist like me who likes polishing those pixels, come up here to the Calm Noise Paint and just paint this over with a white brush. And that's just gonna calm it down just enough to keep the banding at bay but also um, it's gonna make sure that your image isn't overly grainy. And again, perhaps your image is already noisy and the banding even with the noise looks too smooth and in which case you can paint on more noise like this. This image doesn't need it. So I'm gonna snapshot and flatten and we can take a look at before. Here we go, and after. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know, I hope you can see that on your screen because that's a huge difference. Okay, and this one here, there is some banding in this shadow of this image here. And I can tell just by looking at it, that is not a digital phenomena, that is actually there in the pixels. So that is something we're gonna to need to minimize. But also when it's there in the pixels, um, it can be a little bit harder to banish. So you might still end up with some, but if you're adding the noise, if you're playing this action through, it's, um, you know, it's gonna be so barely noticeable. So let's play the banding buster to get started. Okay, and you can see that's doing a great job of smoothing it down already. We don't have the gradients in there, those lines between the gradients, there's some going on up here as well, so I'm just going to cover that whole area. Again, you don't want to paint over the skin because look, it does weird things. If you accidentally do that, you grab a black brush and just go back over it to reveal the, um, the sharpness. For example here, I'll show you if you accidentally paint this over here, it's going to look very odd. So bring those details back in with a black brush if you accidentally paint over. So that has done a great job. I mean, those, these areas are actually here in the image. So that's done a fantastic job. Um, I'm gonna play paint solid color. And that's just playing out. This one actually takes a little bit longer. It's gotta do a lot of figuring out in your image. It selects the subject, it kind of removes it. It, it does a lot behind the scenes, this action, to get that, um, that average color of your image. I'm just going to grab the brush and I'm just going to lightly come over it. Now you can see by painting the colour over this area, again you don't want to do this and paint over your subject, be very very careful, black brush to hide it off your subject. It's worked but it's got rid of the, uh, the original shadow that's in there. So I'm going to grab the dark brush and we're going to go ahead with paint darker. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the opacity down even more with these. So we just have a little bit of that coming over. You can play with these, everything is separate, so I recommend just having a play. Okay, uh, let's slap shot and flatten. In fact, I'm going to take that down even more because it's just taking too much of that shadow away. Okay, but I'm happy with that, it's a good compromise. So slap shot and flatten, up into the history panel and see where we were. Let's zoom in to show you where we were and where we finished completely gone and that will print really nicely just watch the noise use the action in there for reducing the noise if you need to the layer here uh, to calm the noise you can just run that over and that will calm it right down so that's the banding buster photoshop action i hope you enjoy it i hope you love it um, and of course when you've done the banding when you've done it all you can just flatten and save your image as a jpeg so ideally banding is something that you're going to identify quite early on in your image um, if it happens after you've done all your editing um, it might be something like a vignette um, or a darker edge that you're adding in so perhaps if you can identify what's causing the banding um, you won't have to remove it afterwards so i've just played the action i'm just painting away this banding really really quickly 
that's pretty much done. I mean, that's a huge difference. You can still see some colours, colour difference, so I'm just going to play it again. Play the Banding Buster again. You can do that. You can paint the solid colour. Again, solid colour is definitely the second choice in this case. So if it's nearly done and you think, well, that, bu that banding, you know, it was really, really strong, just play it again. And then we're going to paint over it again, and that's pretty much done it. So two hits are sometimes better than one. We do have this because it's it's going darker to lighter. Now snapshot and flatten, and we can see this big, big difference in the history panel where we were before. Can you see that? I'm going to zoom right in. Can you see these lines right here and after? They've gone, literally they've gone. That's another thing with uh, banding. Quite often, if you zoom out, it's worse. It's because it's, it's Photoshop is rendering um, the preview of your image constantly. It's working with your graphics card. It's doing lots of things. And if it had to show you every pixel absolutely perfect, your computer would be super slow. So it has to make a compromise somewhere. So if you zoom in to around 100%, that will give you a better picture of uh, what the banding is actually like. So that's what it's actually like. And that's what it's like now. Massive, massive difference in these. And again, let's come in nice and big. These are more like artifact banding and they've gone before and after. And the same here, before and after. Perfect. But it would really depends on your individual image. Um, it depends on, you know, so many, so many facts. It depends what's caused the banding. It depends why the banding is there. It depends if it's digital, if it's real, if it's in the print, all of these things. So these actions should hopefully cover all the bases. If in doubt, play it twice. And then third time, paint the solid colour. Be careful of extra banding. And then snapshot and flatten. And whatever situation you were in to begin with, it's going to be 10 times better at the end. And you can also read the blog post over on lsp-actions.com, how to reduce banding. That goes into a more technical way of talking about banding that I've put together with some lots of um, kind of manual things. You can also try to get rid of that banding. But hopefully this action will really see you through. I'm Lauren. Thanks for watching.